Are you living for the right thing? You know, most people never take the time to ask themselves this question. Let's talk about what it means to live for the right thing and how you can find out if you are on the right path. A lot of people spend their whole lives working jobs they hate and never really take the time to figure out what they are meant to do. In this episode, you are going to discover how you can make smart choices and know when you are doing the right thing. Stick around to the end to find out how to get the clarity and confidence you need to make the right decision. And I want to give you a gift. I want to help you start this path to success. Just download my free checklist using the show links right below. Your vision shows you the results you hope to achieve. It's what your future will look like when you accomplish your purpose. But this vision must be one worthy of your time and effort. In the 1960s, the Americans pursued their vision of reaching the moon because they knew it would greatly advance knowledge of computers, satellites, and space travel. Likewise, you should shoot for a vision that will provide you with great satisfaction. Adjust your vision as necessary using the following filters. Filter number one, does your vision reflect what you truly want? Does your vision reflect what you want? What you want to accomplish with your life? Looking back 20, 30, or even 40 years from now, will you feel you have lived your best life? I want you to wrestle with these difficult questions because to quote self-help author Robin Sharma, nothing will fill your heart with a greater sense of regret than lying on your deathbed knowing that you did not live your life so as to realize your dreams. Make sure you're not just coasting through life, doing what is easy or what you think you are supposed to do. Run your race. One, you can look back on it and say, yeah, it was a good life. It was the best life, right? You can pat on your shoulders like, yes, I did it. Run the race that makes you feel good about yourself. And remember your core values. Is your current life vision congruent with them? I have gotten caught up in the work project that were important to, the, to my company, but when I took time to reflect, I realized that my work did not contribute to the improvement of my community, which was even more important to me. And it was not something people would remember 10 years from now. It was a job like many others. Often I was busy being busy, caught up in details that didn't matter. I questioned whether this was the best use of the talents God gave me. And then I asked myself, what would I do if money didn't matter? How would I spend my time? As I reflected on these two questions, a truth dawned on me. Jesus said, you can serve God and be enslaved to money. But I was basing my decisions on a poverty mindset because I was trapped in the fear of lack. And because of that, I was accepting jobs to get more money in the pursuit of vain things, not to serve God's purposes, which is what I wanted to do. Likewise, after 10 years as a nightclub promoter in New York City, Scott Harrison, the founder and CEO of the nonprofit Charity Water, realized that his vision was off. I had gone on a trip to Punta del Este and realized on that trip I had gotten most of the things I thought would make me happy and, and they hadn't. His crazy lifestyle had led him to a drug habit and bitten down fingernails. He said, for the first time in years I had clarity. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to live and felt absolutely sure about what to do next. He wrote in his best-selling book, Thirst, but the problem was his lifestyle did not reflect what he wanted. He wanted life. He left New York City and drove up 
north through New England reflecting. He knew something had to change. On the road, a Bible verse kept coming to his mind. Pure religion is this, looking after orphans and widows in their distress, and keep yourself from being polluted by the world. I'm zero for two, Harrison thought, and made a radical decision. I'm going to tithe a year of my life, one year for the ten I had wasted. The former nightclub promoter volunteered on a hospital ship off the Liberian coast in West Africa as a photographer for Mercy Ships. While away, he noticed the effects of dirty water and his radical life reset from spiritual, moral and ethical bankruptcy to a vision aligned with his values set the stage for creating an award-winning charity with a mission to bring clean water to every person on the planet. Apply this filter to your life. Does your vision reflect what you truly want? If not, you may want to consider revising your vision or adopting a new one for your life. Filter number two. Are you passionate about your vision? You may spend 40, 50 or more hours a week at work pursuing your vision. To live a spectacular life, your vision must thrill you. So ask yourself, am I passionate about what I do? For many years, I played music in the music ministry at my local church. We even had the opportunity to write and record new songs. I felt blessed and enjoyed the time I spent practicing with the other members. And then for some reason, my excitement began to wane. I continued to play with the group, but it became something I had to do to serve my church. Over time, I realized that by doing something I was no longer passionate about, I was not living up to my full potential. So I left the music ministry. A short time later, I began coaching other group leaders. That role appealed to me more because I could help other leaders who then in turn would use this knowledge to teach their groups. I felt I was paying it forward an important part of my vision for myself. The Apostle Paul had an exciting vision. He wanted everyone to hear about God's great gift to us, Jesus Christ. In their book, Passionate Visionary, Richard Asko and Charles Cotton write, Paul started with virtually nothing except faith and passion. Yet he built a sustained and fragile network across the known world, one where he coached and casualed and inspired hesitant followers. Passion kept Paul going. Despite hardships, disappointments, exhaustion, and countless setbacks, Asko and Cotton conclude almost 2,000 years later, the heritage of the communities he founded continues in the faith communities of the Christian tradition. Passion fueled Paul's seemingly impossible vision. Now here's the thing, visions change and we change too. So ask yourself, am I passionate about my vision? Would I get up in the middle of the night to work on it? Big visions require hard work and they ask for big sacrifices. You need the added power of passion for the vision to make it to the moon. Filter number three, is your vision big enough? The self-help book the 10x rule by Grant Cardone is based on the idea that the biggest mistake most people make in life is not setting goals high enough. Playing it safe may be easier, but will set you up for a lesser life. In the words of Cardone, most people don't like having big goals because they don't like setting themselves up for failure and disappointment. In fact, the opposite is true. You need to have a big vision to achieve big things. And surprisingly, a big vision is often easier to achieve than a lesser vision because it engages you more intellectually and emotionally. When President Kennedy visited the Cape Canaveral Space Center, he met a man in overalls who was sweeping the floor. The president asked him, what do you do for NASA? I'm helping to put a man on the moon," the janitor replied. 
Planning a moonshot was a vision big enough to fire up that worker and the entire country. In the same way, when I prepared for my first marathon, I didn't take it lightly. I put all my energy into training, gradually increasing the distance I ran each day until I felt ready to complete the full 42.2 kilometers. If instead I had been preparing for a 10k race, I probably would have kept training as usual and winged it. Since the shorter race wouldn't have excited me that much, it would have been too easy actually, it would have not challenged me at all. So people wrongly believe that too high expectations lead to unhappiness and stress. Cardone disagrees. He said, it's not unmet expectations that create unhappiness. Rather, it's not living your life to a high level. It's not actually taking extreme action and watching yourself succeed. You have to dream big to accomplish big things. The Americans chose a huge vision Going to the moon in the 1960s before the end of the decade seemed unlikely, if not impossible. And yet, I argue that Neil Armstrong and his colleagues managed to get to the moon because of that audacious vision. Let me give you another filter. Filter number four. Are you following God's vision? God wants you to have big visions and to glorify Him with your efforts. And he promises to help you too. To quote Paul, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory. With God you can do far more than you can imagine doing on your own. To open yourself up to God's big vision for you, I encourage you to recite this prayer by Sir Francis Drake a sea captain and naval officer and explorer. He said, and he prayed, Disturb me, O Lord, when I am too well pleased with myself, when my dreams have come true, because I have dreamt too little when I arrived safely, because I sailed too close to the shore. As a kite surfer, I know it's safer near the shore. But the real action, the exciting stuff, takes place out at sea. When following God's vision for you, you must do it for His glory, not your personal satisfaction. As Paul reminded the Colossians, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for man, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. And with Him all things are possible. When Jesus was arrested, Peter denied three times that he was one of the disciples and made plans to go back to his trade as a fisherman. But Jesus had a much bigger vision for Peter. He said, feed my sheep. The Messiah told him, and this means, no, Peter, don't go back to fishing. You are meant to be a, a fisher of men. And on Pentecost, his great moment came. Peter fed Jesus' follower by preaching the good news to the crowd in Jerusalem, saying, So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter accepted God's calling. And according to Luke, Peter's words pierced their hearts and allowed thousands of people to hear the good news and to repent and to start following Jesus. Because Peter followed God's vision for his life, he has received God's help and was able to accomplish amazing things. By filtering your vision for your life through the lens of God's word and aligning your goals with his will, you can live a life of purpose and make a lasting impact on the world. And that's how you unlock profound meaning and significance in your life. So thank you so much for your likes, for your subscribes, and I love reading your comments. And thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video.